Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you. Oh, g'day, this is Captain Noob. This is a broadsider. It's a two-shot broadsider, and if nautical nonsense is something you wish, then this will be the weapon for you, because we've found that two-shot launcher weapons, not explosive weapons, launcher weapons, are exceedingly powerful in this game. So we've got ourselves a broadsider. This was on a mule, by the way, so I've had this for yonks, but now it's actually had its time to shine. Also, we've got a standard barrel on this because the light barrel does decrease your damage, so make sure you chuck the standard one on, unless you are unhappy about the weight of the thing. We've got 10% damage whilst aiming, and that's clearly kills filling 15% faster, which leads me to want to use this thing a little bit with uh, vats, just so it can guarantee the hits and outside of power armor. So we'll have to see how that works. Um, we'll use all of our unyielding buffs, but if we happen to get um, to destroyed, then I'll just jump into power armor and utilize stabilize, and we'll see how we go. We've got 689 damage here, which is already a very high number for what this thing is doing, but we can boost this some more. You see this perk right here called Demo Expert? We can chuck that on, and we'll get ourselves 1,093 damage, which is pretty good. And then for the biggest increase you'll see in your life, we chuck on that for... I mean, okay, we did get like a hundred and something damage out of that, so wow, okay, wow, well, bloody mess is actually doing something. But 1200 damage, and we ain't even at a lower health scale, so we could probably get away with this thing as is and not have to worry about, you know, getting my health down to activate my unyielding armor and everything. Got Ricochet for tanking, though. Evasive is there for also tanking because we won't really have the option to sneak. Gunfu is there to use this thing in VATS if we want to. Keep shooting stuff and looking onto things as we go along. Got Tenderizer there for something that won't die in one shot. We've got Basher, Barbarian, Blocker, and um, Lock and Load just to, you know, bolster the performance of this thing. That for faster reloads. Basher for if anything gets too close, we've got a 10% chance to cripple them, which will give them a stagger, giving us a little bit of time to run off. Barbarian and Blocker are there for defensive purposes, so if I get punched, I'm not going to take nearly as much damage or hit across the face with a big old sledgehammer either. And yep, that goes, that's pretty much what I've explained there. And we've also got that up fully and follow through is up fully. But I'm not actually certain if you can actually pull sneak criticals with these because even if you are not using VATS, you'll never see the notification up in the corner of your screen. We've also got a bunch of these ones. They give me extra perks that I can use in here. Like awareness, which is a dummy perk when I'm not using weapons that are explosive. Unfortunately, apparently this perk doesn't actually work as intended. But I'd like to put that there because, you know, if I'm using a thing, I want the explosive radius to be larger. And everyone says, oh, it's just thrown. I mean, it doesn't, ex doesn't say that, so it's probably bugged. And we've also got glow sight, so I think glowing is going to die a lot easier. Nerd Rage is there if we want to go down there, but at 1200 damage, probably won't have to. Okay, so here we are outside of, I don't know, Bikini Bottom, wherever Spongebob lives. I actually didn't grow up watching Spongebob, I just see a lot of the memes about that. And oh, look, we can one-shot him. That guy we whiffed. Alright, maybe we should go for these torso shots. They seem to be a lot more guaranteed. And they'll do the job, and they'll explode a little bit better. I might as well stand here whilst I'm reloading. I'm not really in a rush at the moment. I've got a full bar of health. Not if anything, not if that dog has anything to say about it. But things are looking on the up right now. There's a little bit of gun fill action there. Didn't actually kill that guy in one shot there, weirdly enough. But we'll just get the criticals going whenever we can just to guarantee those shots. I think I would like a little bit of uh, health going so I can get more of my unyielding armor actually working. Now, we do have a dense chest piece, which means we should take a little bit less damage when we hit with our own explosives. And now we're doing 1916 damage, which, yeah, it's pretty powerful, isn't it? I don't know about you, but something's a little bit off about the color grading right now. The game doesn't look like its usual self. And there hasn't been any patches, so... Or anything, there hasn't been any changes. Is that a moonwalking mutant hound? Well, I guess that's what they do in their spare time when they're not one-shotting bloodied players. That one's just kind of hit reverse and then it's like shuffling, right? Like the LMFA you used to do, but instead of like moving their legs, they just slide backwards. It's a very, uh, it's a very complex technique that requires a lot of standing around and waiting for players to come and kick their ass. And, you know, they're making good use out of their downtime, it would seem. 
Okay, so it's been a bit hit and miss so far, no pun intended, but I think if we can get our perception high enough like it is now to just hit the leg because, you know, exploiting damage like this is perfectly normal. That guy only had two hit points because he died and I saw that much damage on him, so... I don't know, maybe it's a special effect of the weapon that causes things to have under 10 hit points. <laughs> Possibly, you don't know that it doesn't. So, we're having a little bit of trouble finding the mutants that are actually in here. Uh, there's one. They've all kind of bunched up together, which is very convenient. Unfortunately uh, for me, that other one had his stupid death animation and didn't fall to pieces. So, uh, I wasn't actually able to utilize that extra splash damage radius that we should be getting out of, uh, Grenadier to do much there. We'll shoot these guys from in here. It's always useful to get the Vats lock-ons because you'll find that they'll do good damage. And if you can get them near walls where you can easily bounce splash damage off of, then you'll have a good time. Unless you're an idiot like me and whips a 95% shot. <laughs> I was trying to bounce it off the, uh, the wall and well whilst the opportunity was there to shoot him in the chest i really should have taken it and oh no you have a bit of hard time doing damage don't you tell you what blocker is a good pick for getting rid of the frustration of being killed by those mutant hounds because they sneak up on you especially when your loud mouth won't shut up and actually listen to the game speaking of listening to the game i've adjusted the audio so the game shouldn't drown me out nearly as much fuck's sake okay never mind they're back Get out of here. You die in a spectacular explosion that would have done no damage to the enemies around you. And only and it is only blocking my vision. So we've got a three shot magazine on this, which you know we can cap out to three kills on that. So that's pretty good. It's fairly efficient. I haven't crafted a bunch of uh cannonballs for this, but I don't main a broadsider, so I don't really mind to see all of these go by the end of the video. Or so. I think I killed myself. That wasn't the dog doing that. I have no idea where that dog went. I suppose that was like a murder-suicide type deal there. We're back up to full health now. I'm no use on using Stimpaks, right? When you can die and respawn two seconds later. Don't have to uh, go... Oh, there we go. Killed myself again. I, I only think that one cannonball actually hit me there. And it almost brought me down to that, so... Yes, and that's with the dense chest piece too, so if, even if I was full health in power armor, I probably would have died there, which I think is hilarious. Because you'd think power armor would be a little bit more protective than that, but it isn't. So I think we've only got a couple more to deal with. He's lamenting over no fight today. Well, yes, you will not get to fight because you will die before you have the chance, which is nice. That one resisted it. That's okay, we'll whack him again with vats this time and we can up the consistency like that maybe should top up health but i'm not gonna all right time to wake up the ghouls and probably die i've got a little bit of purified water on me it's a legendary look at that it's the rarest ghoul you'll ever find the type of ghoul it'll give you a random script object it's pretty nice now, I'm lucky there to proc that when I wasn't being under attack because I'm not sure if we can actually break the lock-ons with the uh, vats from the explosions that you get out of far-flung fireworks, but I definitely can't see through it, which has killed me on multiple occasions, and I will never stop being angry about that. You spend all this time investing and in getting levels so you can level up a perk, and then it's just, it just does that to you. Not the best... Uh, investment there i think the better investment would have been ammo factory like if if you are on the fence about using far-flung fireworks um get ammo factory first ammo factory is tons more useful luckily we've got blocker here so we're able to shrug off those attacks and we'll have to reload here so we'll get over the fence interrupted the reload cycle there and that ghoul overshot the gate and is having a bit of pathing issues it's pretty standard wouldn't hold it against him but uh, I think I managed to pop a few with uh, just one shot just then so that's helpful what about these guys I, think I got all of them there might be one more left in the room target the ground seems to do pretty good 
Oh, so they've got the um, cannonballs under explosive ammo, which I feel like is kind of odd because you make them just out of lead. And I don't think we're throwing lead far or fast enough to make it actually explode an impact. It's just kind of a weird thing that happens. Like, there's no explosive charge within a lead ball that we have to, you know, utilize here. And also, I just got showered in ghoul guts. Well, time to go back to base and sit in a decontaminate decontamination arch for 15 minutes. Never in the history of this game have I ever been shotgunned by ghoul giblets like that, but I was damn glad I was recording so I could share that moment with my subscribers. My loyal subjects in the kingdom of me. I'm the king. I get all the bitches. <laughs> all the angels, they're mine. Unless you want to make, like, copies of them. There's been a couple of copies of Winter I've seen. They've, they've got the, uh the same um elegant hairstyle like that's what it's called elegant and they give them black makeup and blue eyes i've seen a couple of uh possible looking ones but you can't capture the majesty of the og the one that you know is just like a repaint of nora from fallout 4 just looks a lot better even i can't recapture that although i'm guessing with the the face textures that i use in fallout 4 i reckon fallout 76 winter would look a lot better so, once they figure out how to tool the, uh, the face editors and all of those, uh, cool mods from Fallout 4 to Fallout 76, if we ever get mod support, I'd, I'd like to chuck in, um, what the angels look like in this game in Fallout 4, just to see how much better they would look with better textures. So, that third, um, broadsider attack there was kind of useless, but, you know, you can two-shot a behemoth if you're sneaking. I don't think sneaking is super relevant here, because... As you saw, I mean, Vass doesn't give you an idea of when you're critting either, but I don't think we've been doing that all video. And I think the greatest danger to um, me is me when using this weapon. I don't think I have to worry about the uh, power armor defense or anything that you'd get out of power armor because I can just kill everything too quickly, which is nice, which means I can use my unyielding buffs, so we'll continue doing that. Although, if you feel like tanking and power armor at full health with this weapon is more of a viable option, then I suggest go for it. You've got the damage, right? I'm just more worried about the consistency and accuracy, to be honest. Alright, time to get uh, the Kraken from Davy Jones' locker. Oh, someone's beating me to the party of explosive weaponry, it would seem. One of these crackheads has uh, pulled out the big guns today. And if we can get rid of this Mylek King very quickly, that would be ideal. Ooh, we're doing pretty well so far. If you ever want to get an idea of how overpowered the Mylek Kings are, well, I just two-shotted Swan with a torso shot, and maybe that was like a three-shot kill there. That's a Mylek Deep King, so we'll continue to broadside it from back here. Okay, that one was a two-shot, so I probably just whiffed that one of those shots before. We've got 76 rounds left, which displeases me, but now I've got 75. And we'll go for the legs here, like an Adat, you see. Seems to be doing pretty well. Make sure we don't get Lugid on here. And the Queen goes down in a time to kill, which I find satisfactory, especially for a broadsider, which, you know, pre this patch was Garbo. Now we are getting a slight penalty because we're hitting them twice per every shot, but as you can tell, it's negligible. Alright, one final impossible to get over hurdle is left, or so we think. Perhaps that the uh, broadsider works a little bit differently when it's two shot because, you know, it's got to mess around with two projectiles hitting in the same spot. And if you've been an eagle-eyed viewer, you'll probably notice that whilst the uh, things are zeroed in on their targets and eventually hitting them, for some reason the cannonball, like, completely spazzes out before it hits the target sometimes, so... With that in mind, we might actually be able to get ourselves... Can I eat this? Why can't I pick that up? Shame on you, game. I'd like to, you know, get him. We did one damage there. Alright. Only about uh, 2,700 to go. I guess we could kill the red peanuts in the meantime and do occasional purified waters. Now, what I could probably do here is instead of using uh, gun food because we're not really utilizing it, we could grab that instead, and then we'll actually need to grab something else that is very important in this equation called a shotgun.
because you know if you're trying to use a broadside for use in hang on okay that took me a while I can't fire at these guys right now fuck it I'm doing a stim pack you guys earned this and now you're going to sit there and all get nuked with a naval cannon I don't know how that works anyways so oh hang on it just landed for me die bat all right I'm, I think I counted back five damage on that so we're making steady progress here tell you what I'll keep fighting until I'm out of well, that's annoying fine I'm going over here now I've got an answer for everything bats every single thing this time I'm wise to the act huh Tell you what, I think it's fucking fair game for them to use their cheapest move while I use mine. But the problem is, I paid for this shit. These guys were just born that way. They were born with the ability to piss with their wings and such. So we've managed to cripple the torso there. One of the wings is crippled, so he'll be landing shortly. Let me just hit these up on the uh, old favourites. And wow, that is incredibly seizure-inducing. I'm definitely changing that when we get mod support. Go for a wing. Nothing. Alright, go hard or go home, right? We'll go for some headshots. Or torso. Stim pack, because I'm too lazy to get out of this firing. Hmm. Perhaps a critical help. I think I got a whopping 13 damage out of that. Alright, what if we were to hit near him? How's that going to go for us? gonna catch him on his hitbox that's like here or something no it is a real shame that the bats are you know their fucking hitboxes are so fucked that it turns weapons that are doing in excess of 2200 damage and pretty much good against everything else to a complete fucking nothing but you know that's kind of reminding us what the broadsider was like versus everything before so in a way it's poetic and I whiffed that 95%. Even when I'm not playing XCOM, I'm playing XCOM. Well, might as well kill the minions. At least get a annoyed reaction out of it, rather than tickling it with these you know, cannonballs that I'm shooting at it. Targeting the torso seems like a good idea. Notes that I'm constantly getting um, ricochet procs against them, so I'm getting their own death breath back at them. I've got a fan or something to blow that back. And tell you what, these guys could borrow some of that fucking gold for Colgate toothpaste, and then they won't be so angry all the time because they were not infested with toothaches. Go for a leg. No. This clearly isn't working, and I'd be insane to keep it going any longer than this because, well. There's your fatal flaw, your one thing that makes this weapon unfortunately not worth it. I like versatility in my weapons and this thing cannot provide it, so basically the only good um, explosive weapon, uh, rather launcher weapon, because people don't understand semantics, is uh, the auto grenade launcher. And on that bombshell, do you get it? It's time for me to go away. Thank you very much for watching, guys. These bats will leave me alone if I stand here. You just wait.